we're going to start to have a look at how we can use different graphical representations of data to help us to interpret data in the interpretation of data section. We're going to start this off by having a look at box plots. Now hopefully you remember box plots from GCSE. A box plot is a visual presentation of one variable data. It displays the median, upper and lower quartile, as well as the maximum and minimum values. From these, we can compare central tendency and spread. So we're going to start off, we have this data here, and we're trying to find the median and interquartile range. And in order to find the interquartile range, we have to find the lower quartile and the upper quartile. Instead of doing it the way that you would do at GCSE though, we're going to use our graphical calculators to find these values. So in the statistics part of our calculator, we're going to type in this data here. So 20, 15, 10, 30, 33, 38, 5, 11, 13, 20, 25, 35, 31 and 17. Remember, as we have said before, always double check the data when you put it into your calculator because after this point we're just going to write down the values that come up in our calculator and if we've written something down wrong then we will get the wrong values. So then we're going to go into calc we need to check our set. This is set up correctly for this data because we put our data into list one and we had no frequencies. And then we want to go into one variable because the one variable that we have is the number of bags of crisps sold per day. So then we can write down the values that we need. So the median, remember if we scroll down, this is the information that we're going to represent in our box plot. So the median is 20. Our lower quartile is our Q1, that's 13. Our upper quartile, that's our Q3, is 31. So that means that our interquartile range is going to be found by doing 31 minus 13. Just to save me a little bit of time, I'm also just going to write down quickly what the minimum value is and what the maximum value is. And I've just got those from min x and max x here. So back into the normal calculator bit of our calculator. 31 minus 13. There we go, so our interquartile range is 18. Now we're going to draw this on our box plot. It's quite important that we use a ruler for this because then we can see it more clearly and also it looks better. So we've got our minimum at 5, our maximum at 38, so looking here each square is worth 1, so 38, there we go. Our lower quartile is 13, I'm going to put a bit of a longer line for the lower quartile, median and upper quartile. The median is 20, we put that on next. And our upper quartile is 31. So then we join these middle three longer lines together to make a box. Sorry about that. To make a box. And then we add two lines going to our maximum value and our minimum value. These have also been called box and whisker diagrams, so you might know them by that name instead. I'd now like you to give the now you try a go, remembering to write down the median, the lower quartile, the upper quartile to find the interquartile range, and the minimum and maximum values. Use your calculator to do this, do not do it by hand. So hopefully we should find this data so that our median is 16, 
Our low quartile is 13.5. Our upper quartile is 18.5. Remember, the lower quartile is Q1. The upper quartile is Q3. So our interquartile range here ends up being 5. The minimum value is 9. And the maximum value is 21. Again, we need to do it onto our copy this data onto our box plot here. Here we can see again each square is worth one because we've got five squares between zero and five. It's always a good idea to check uh, what each little box here is worth before you start drawing. So our lowest value is nine. So we're going to do a small line at nine. Our biggest value is 21. So again, a small line at 21. Our lower quartile is 13.5. Our median is 16. And our upper quartile is 18.5. Again, join in the middle three slightly longer lines together. And then joining our minimum and maximum values. Just as we did in the standard deviation and variance section, you can talk about which one is higher on average, which one is more consistent or varied. This time, usually, we would use the interquartile range to describe which one is more consistent and which one is more varied. Here, because our data is on two different subjects, we have a uh, number of bags of crisps sold and we have the number of emails. We can't really compare these to each other. So please refer back to the standard deviation and variance section to see how we use the wording for uh, comparing how spread the data is. Again, this time we would use the interquartile range instead of the standard deviation, but it's still, if the interquartile range is smaller, it's more consistent. If the interquartile range is bigger, then it is more varied. Another important part of box plots, which you might not have seen before, is outliers. And the reason why this is so important is because they can skew our data. So it's quite important that we see if we have any outliers. For this, usually we will use 1.5 times the interquartile range added onto the upper and lower quartiles. Sorry about that, I can't read it anymore. So 1.5 times the interquartile range above the upper quartile, 1.5 times the interquartile range below the lower quartile. And at A level, we usually use a formula to determine if any members of a set are outliers. When we're marking them onto our graph, we will use an X to do so. This is the same as well in A level math. So again, just as we did before, we're going to type the numbers into our calculator. 23, 21, 10, 30, 33, 24, 8, 11, 18, 26, 25, 49, 31, 19. Double check that you've typed everything in correctly. Check that it says list one, one, because we have no frequencies, and then we go into one var. So this time I'm not going to write down the minimum and the maximum straight away because they may not be the actual minimum and maximum values. I'm still going to write down the median first, because that's not going to change. The lower quartile, remember that's Q1, is 18. The upper quartile, which is Q3, is 30 which means our interquartile range, which is 30 minus 18, gives us 12. So in order for us to determine if there's any outliers, we're going to do, as it says above, the lower quartile minus 1.5 times the interquartile range, which is going to be 18 minus 1.5 times... 12, which gives us 0. For the upper quartile, plus 1.5 times the interquartile range, that
that would give us 30 plus 1.5 times 12, which gives us 48. And we can see here from our calculator that it says that the maximum value is 49, which means that that value of 49 is an outlier. So the minimum value is going to still be the minimum value that we get in our calculator because I have nothing that is zero or below. So our minimum value is going to be eight. But the new maximum value, and unfortunately this time we are going to have to have a look at our data, it's not going to be 49 anymore because as we just said, that's an outlier. Instead, it's going to be 33 because that's our next biggest number. So just as we did before, copying this onto our box plot, checking again, yes, each little square is worth one. So the minimum value is eight. The maximum value is 33. The lower quartile is 18. The median is 23.5 and the upper quartile is 30. Joining the three lines in the middle together to make a box and then connecting the minimum and maximum value. Now as we said before, the outlier is going to be marked on with an X, so at 49, we're going to put an X, and that denotes that there is a piece of data there, but it is an outlier. And you can have several X's on either side of your box plot. Now you can see the difference between what this looks like now and what it looked like if we didn't have a look at the outliers, because our line here would be all the way out here, and it would look like the data was more spread out than what it is because there's actually only one outlier here which would make our data look skewed. I suggest now that you pause the video and give the now you try a go. So hopefully we found that the median is 16, the lower quartile is 13.5, the upper quartile is 18.5, the interquartile range is 5, when we did the lower quartile minus 1.5 times the interquartile range, we ended up with 6, which is fine because the minimum value for our data is 9. However, when we did the upper quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range, we ended up with 26. And we can see here that the maximum value is 27. Because that's above 26, that means that's now an outlier. And we have to check the data to see what the new minimum maximum value is. The minimum value is going to stay the same as it was before, which is 9. The new maximum value, so the next value below 27, is 20. So that's our new maximum value. Again, drawing this onto the box plot, minimum value of 9. Checking again, yes, each square is worth 1. So minimum value is 9. Maximum value is now 20. Lower quartile is 13.5. Upper quartile is 18.5. Median is 16. Connecting the three longer middle lines together. Attaching on the minimum and the maximum value. And then remembering that we add a cross for our outlier which is at 27, which is going to be here. So again, we can see the difference between how our graph looks now to how it would look if we included the outlier. Thank you very much for listening.